It's day 560 of the Trump administration, and President Trump just wrapped up a rally in Pennsylvania where he ramped up his attacks on the media. Just hours earlier, the president's top national security officials delivered a forceful warning on Russian election interference, promising to protect the integrity of U.S. elections. But there was no mention of Russian meddling at tonight's rally, though the president did bring up his meeting with Vladimir Putin in Helsinki. In Helsinki, I had a great meeting with Putin. We discussed everything. I had a great meeting. Had a great meeting. We got along really well. By the way, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. That's a really good thing. Now, we're being hindered by the Russian hoax. It's a hoax, okay? I'll tell you what, Russia's very unhappy that Trump won, that I can tell you. But I got along great with Putin. And everybody said, wow, that was a great, that was great. A couple of hours later, I started hearing these reports that, you know, they wanted me to walk up. Here's a podium here. They wanted me to walk up and go like this. They wanted me to go up and have a boxing match. I said, whatever happened to diplomacy? He liked me. He really, really liked me. President Trump also saved plenty of time to complain about the press. Fake news. <laughs> Despite only negative publicity, only negative stories from the fakers back there. And even these people back here, these horrible, horrendous people, even these people back there stand, look at it. It looks like the Academy Awards is so many. You ever see this? Bit? They can make anything bad because they are the fake, fake, disgusting news. Nice. As we mentioned, it was a whole different scene during today's White House briefing where we heard these clear warnings on Russian election interference from top administration officials. Our democracy itself is in the crosshairs. Free and fair elections are the cornerstone of our democracy, and it has become clear that they are the target of our adversaries who seek, as the DNI just said, to sow discord and undermine our way of life. Our focus here today is simply to tell the American people we acknowledge the threat. It is real. It is continuing. And we're doing everything we can to have a legitimate election that the American people can have trust in. The reality is it's going to take all of us working together to hold the field because this threat is not going away. As I have said consistently, Russia attempted to interfere with the last election and continues to engage in malign influence operations to this day. This is a threat we need to take extremely seriously and to tackle and respond to with fierce determination and focus. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders told NBC News today that President Trump instructed his team to speak at today's news conference. Asked when the president made the request, Sanders didn't respond. And it's important to point out, just last Friday, the president met with his National Security Council on election security for less than one hour. After the meeting, the White House released a statement that said the administration would not tolerate foreign interference in elections, but it did not mention Russia by name. Let's bring in our leadoff panel for a Thursday night. Jeremy Bash, former chief of staff at the CIA and the Pentagon, and three Pulitzer Prize winners were with us tonight. Carol Lennig, investigative reporter for The Washington Post, Phil Rucker, White House bureau chief for The Washington Post, and Matt Apuzo, reporter for The New York Times. Um, Jeremy Bash, let me start with you. Um, the, the analysis in the national security community seems to be that um, the men and women who were in the White House briefing room were speaking to U.S. policy. Policy. We're speaking for um, America against Russia and that the president is is sort of a, a rogue actor. Um, what do you make of the fact that the president, even if he's a rogue actor, was the person who was alone in a room with Vladimir Putin? Does it matter to Vladimir Putin if he can get Donald Trump in a room alone that the rest of his national security officials take a tougher line? Well, for Putin, the only guy that matters is the guy in the Oval Office. So your point is well taken, Nicole. I think it was manifestly the right call and the right message by the national security leaders to stand at the White House and warn against Russian interference in the, in the, in the coming election. I think it was obviously an implicit rebuke of the president's position 
that there's nothing to worry about with respect to Russian interference. Um, but in essence, what you have here is, is part of a broad pattern where the national security establishment is, in effect, ignoring the commander in chief. They're basically saying, notwithstanding whatever he tweets, whatever he says, whatever he does, we're going to keep our head down, do our job, and protect the American people. Matapuzo, this performance today in the briefing room caps almost a year of awkward testimony. Christopher Wray um, testified to the fact that he'd never been asked by the president to do anything from a law enforcement standpoint to protect this country. Admiral Rogers testified that on behalf of the NSA, he's really not doing anything extra in the wake of, of 2016. Um, what do you make of, of sort of the impotence with which these folks have to go about doing their job without the go-ahead or the green light from the commander-in-chief? Yeah, I haven't seen anything from the federal law enforcement or intelligence side that suggests that uh, the intelligence community is sort of sitting on its hands, sort of just, well, if somebody told me we had to protect the country, I guess we would. Um, but, but I'm not talking <clears throat> about the basic functions of their government agencies, but, but certainly when there have been, I mean, General Hayden, former CIA director, former NSA head, has called the 2016 attack a political 9-11. Yeah. Certainly there is nothing happening in the government and the executive branch that mirrors the steps that the national security apparatus took after 9-11. Well, I mean, I'll go, I'll go you one better. Uh, even, if, even if everybody's on the same page and even if everybody is, you know, at, uh, at the highest level of alert going into the election, uh, there's only sort of so much you can prepare for. And, and as an example, during the Obama administration, the FBI, the CIA, everybody was was on alert for Russian interference. And when they saw the hacking that was happening, they looked at it and said, OK, yeah, we, we know this game. This is they're going to they're going to seize the material and they're going to use it for intelligence purposes. It was only when they so you know, when they weaponized the hacked material and started mm -hmm. publishing it through WikiLeaks, did they say, oh, my God, we didn't see this coming. So the so question another failure of imagination. Exactly. So I think that, you know, one of the things to be asking now is sure you're preparing, but but do you really even see uh, what's going to be coming down the pike? Just because if they decide to play again doesn't mean they're going to, the Russians are going to go to the same playbook. Phil Rucker, color me skeptical that this performance was anything other than a shiny object to distract from the fact that yesterday the president and people close to him had had a moment of, of concern that he may have obstructed justice or done something that looked a lot like it in plain sight only by asking, yeah. I know, it feels like dog years, it feels yeah. like seven days ago, by asking, uh, ordering, uh, or they, they're now quibbling about what the definition of the word should is, I think. I think that's Rudy's latest talking point. But, but was this performance today something long in the works that they were all asked to submit their remarks, or was this something to change the topic from the mess that the president created yesterday with his early morning tweet about getting sessions to uh, end the witch? I think it came about rather quickly, but I don't think it was purely a, a, a move to distract from the news yesterday. I think this has been building for some time. We saw Dan Coates a week or two ago raise some alarm in that interview with Andrea Mitchell out in Aspen. We've seen the intelligence. <laughs> alarm is a good way to put it. Wait, let, 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 you said that. Let, let me show you his answer about okay. Helsinki. Let's watch that. In the run up to the Helsinki summit, U.S. officials, uh, ambassador, ambassadors to NATO, ambassadors to Russia said that the president would raise the issue of a malign activity with President Putin. But he didn't discuss that, at least at the press conference. You're saying today that the president has directed you to make the issue of election meddling a priority. How do you explain the disconnect between what you are saying, his advisors, and what the president has said about this issue? I'm not in a position to either understand fully or uh, talk about what happened at Helsinki. Why not? <laughs> I mean that is amazing. I mean, th th this is the problem, right? It was only Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin in that room with their translators. That was by design because Trump didn't want there to be any note takers. He didn't want there to be any kind of paper trail or official government record of what was discussed, what was agreed to, uh, what Trump said, what Putin said. And so now you have U.S. government officials not sure what happened in that meeting, there's yet to be a public briefing uh, by the administration, but what we have in Moscow is the Kremlin uh, doling out details from those conversations, characterizing it as Trump making verbal agreements uh, with Putin in, in ways that favor Russia, and we're not getting similar information from the United States. It's now been two and a half weeks. Carolina, do you get the sense that anyone in the White House is making the president eat some spinach, if you will, and ramp up the rhetoric and the language from the White House? 
that that shows some window into um, the president or his White House recognizing that Russia is a threat and that pretending that it isn't is bad politics for this White House? I think it's clear that that while some may try to give him some spinach, he's not eating it. And <laughs> it's, um, you know, take, for example, the tweets um, after watching a lot of cable news television about the Paul Manafort trial, the president tweeted something that would only add to a normal prosecutor's view that he is making threatening or um, urging statements about shutting down a criminal probe. He's making those tweets during an ongoing criminal trial, which is pretty interesting and, and sensational as well. And there was nobody that was going to stop him. When I asked um, his lawyers that morning, what are you suggesting to him that he should not do this? They essentially said, you know, that's not really our role here. The president does what he wants to do. This is his megaphone. No one's going to take it away from him. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.